Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton and welcome to That Scoop Show. This is the inaugural episode and we're here at Apex 2019. I'm joined by Scott from SW Systems, Bjorn from Kick, and Mike from Equus. Thanks very much for joining us, guys. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, which I found really fascinating when I talk to people at these shows, is we get very excited about things like Industry 4.0, about artificial intelligence, blockchain, all these buzzwords. And then I start to ask people in the manufacturing facilities about them, and I find out that actually they're just buzzwords and what they've got is real problems out there in the factory. Mike, is that something you're seeing out there? We certainly hear a lot about 4.0. Um, our customers have not driven that toward our direction. Um, it reminds me when we first switched from um, embedded controller machines to PC controlled machines uh, a long time ago, uh, many customers asked us if we, if our machines were networkable or if the, if the data from the cleaning results could show up on their network somewhere and, or if they could monitor the screens from their office or run the machine from their car. And, and we had a lot of fun with that because we made all those things possible but not practical. Right. Nobody, with, I shouldn't say nobody, I'm sure somebody right now is, is hearing or watching this going, I can control my machine from my desktop. But it's, there was no practical use for that. In fact, it was very in impractical. And, and I think that for perhaps a lot of companies, 4.0 is kind of at that same early stage of the fact that we can do it doesn't necessarily guarantee an increase in productivity, um, although, it sounds really good, and it probably mm. will lead to that, but I'm not sure right now, at least I can only speak for a very small segment of the market, they're more interested in the results of the, of the process they're, they're, they're performing, not so much whether that process result is going to talk to another machine. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I think sometimes it's us getting bogged down in the how and not thinking enough about the why when we're, when we're looking at new products. I know every time I go to CES and look at those startups, I look at some products and think, wow, that's clever, but... Really? Who needs that? And it's, you know, there's so much of that. And Bjorn, when I look at what you're doing, you, you, you've got lots of smart factory initiatives, but you're actually doing some stuff like your Void Workshop, you're doing with uh, Indium here that are solving real problems. You've got to keep that balance right, I guess. Yes, and I agree with your earlier statement that there's a disconnect between what us as machine and equipment and software manufacturers uh, are talking about and excited about our technology and the market. And I think that the disconnect is we haven't done a good enough job of explaining how this technology will benefit them. And, and uh, I read a paper recently, I think it was Siemens in Germany, they talked about Industry 4.0 as a business outcome uh, generated technology, in other words, yeah. or driven technology. In other words, to technology, for the sake of itself has no value. It's only what it will do for the customers. And of course, the number one issue is cost. You know, how can this technology deliver lower costs? Yeah. Um, but there are also many more general business outcomes, like you hear companies trying to move up the food chain because the profitability is low and they go into more automotive or medical. And doing that, they need a, a different type of capability. Like, yeah. like process traceability and so forth. Yeah, yeah, and that plays to what we've spoken about numerous times, which is that combination of domain knowledge and and that broader knowledge, which is really important. Scott, that kind of segues neatly into you moving from being a poacher to being a gamekeeper. You were you were in the office having all these suppliers visit you, tell you about their products. Now you're that supplier talking to all the different EMS guys. Has that kind of changed the way you look at look at things? Yeah, absolutely. The 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 you know we talk about industry 4.0 when that first became a, a buzzword i kind of thought well what did what do they actually mean and and then when i started understanding it's like well we're doing that on my em when i had the ems company we were we were doing what they what they were talking about so it, it seemed I, I didn't quite quite get it and i think that's part of the problem is is you know what i hear from customers now that i'm on the rep side selling equipment is i don't know that they get really explained what the industry 4.0, what the connectivity does for, for you in terms of, uh, uh, of information. So a, a key piece that I thought we did very well uh, with ACD is we would mine the data and bring it back and we would look at things like defects. Are we facing the same defects week after week? If so, we've got a problem. And what I find being 
now on this side is a lot of the customers I talk to, they have a routine of fixing issues on a per run, but they never stop and say what's happening through the whole facility. And, 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 and so they may solve the solder bridging time uh, bridging problem they're having 25 times in a month yeah. as opposed to solve it once for all 25 yeah. things and that's I think part of it is understanding in this connected world the connected shop floor what why do I want that yeah. and, and where and where are some practical applications yeah. yeah one of the things I always liked when I came and met you and saw the factory at ACD is you also were quite open in sharing that information with with customers and Absolutely. that's the kind of visibility that that is a real benefit. On a personal note, you kind of left the industry for a while. Did, did you miss us all? Is I that missed you. I, I, I missed you yeah. very it specifically. Yeah, yeah. And, and Mike and you know, Warren, yeah, you know, it's yeah. a, no, it's uh, yeah. I, I left the industry for a little bit and and uh, and realized that I, I did miss it. I like the technology. I, you know, in my my new role, I, I call it being being the grandpa. Yeah. I get to go into a facility. We get to talk about issues. We get to you know problem solve and do all that good stuff and then when I go home at night I don't have to worry about all the issues that, that, that I used to have to worry about so it's a new set of issues though well, you know maybe, maybe we're part of that term that I had for the first time today from someone at IPC which is the silver tsunami which is all the mature people leaving the industry and all those skills disappearing is that does the silver tsunami concern you Mike Yes and no. Uh, it, we've we've talked about that. You and I have actually talked about that. Not with that eloquent term, silver tsunami. I like that. You know, although I'm gotten getting more silver myself, so yeah. maybe I'm almost out. But um, what we've seen in our in our world is over the last 20 years, sages, wise men and women, engineers that were experts on everything. They were the the go-to. Have retired and probably now in record numbers, but this has been happening for a long time. There's been kind of a, a brain uh, uh, drain in a lot of companies and a lot of their process experts are gone. So in our world, in our little niche world of cleaning, uh, cleaning was, everybody used to clean up until almost nobody cleaned yeah. and now it's coming back again and a lot of people are thinking it's it's brand new uh, or it's, you know, why are we cleaning? The, the jar says no clean, like an instruction, don't clean. Yeah. And we must be doing something wrong. And, and the old man or woman, the old sage there would have said, oh, no, no, cleaning no, is, is always cleaning, part of no the process. Clean. Here's the reason yeah. why. May, you may or may not have to, but here are the factors. And those people are gone. Yeah. So when I answered earlier, good and bad, it, it, it's bad because people might be adopting a process they don't need. They yeah. might be avoiding a process they do need. Um, that's the bad side. The good side is they look to experts, you know, in in the clean world and in in the show world and yeah. in expositions and symposiums to tell them what they need to do. Yeah. Uh, and of course, everyone has a horse in a race somewhere. Yeah. So maybe they're getting the best advice. Maybe they're not. But yeah, there's definitely a silver tsunami. Yeah. Uh, coming yeah, down. Yeah, it's it's kind of curious. And I actually, well, you know. It, it, so when I came on board with Southwest System, D will go and introduce me as the young blood that's coming into the rep organization. And I finally had to look and go, D, I'm not that young. What are you doing? But 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 at the same time, I took a step back. And you look at the you look at this industry, and it's an issue. We're not bringing in enough young 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 people into it, and it and we need we need to be mentoring them and, and bringing some uh, some of the younger people in because you know we all are getting older. Yeah, and there's there's some interesting initiatives to do that, and. You know, AI and all those things isn't going to replace that huge amount of expertise, is it, Bjorn? We need to, we need to somehow make sure that's either maintained or at least documented so you can uh, keep up with it. Absolutely. We had an interesting situation. Uh, part of our uh, product spectrum is to automatically profile PCBs as they go through the uh, thermal process. And um, automotive is probably our number one sector because they want the traceability, they want to make sure that every product is produced to spec. And we got to a level where most of these automotive factories used it and the, uh, their clients, the automotive manufacturers themselves, had accepted it. And all of a sudden, we started getting calls from our EMS customers saying, you know, now there's a whole new generation of auditors from BMW, Toyota, Honda, and so forth. And they do not accept this automatic profiling. So they asked us for help to give them material so they can go back and educate that new, younger generation of auditors. Yep. 
uh, among their clients. Yeah, no, it, it, it's absolutely fascinating. Last thing I wanted to talk about, a little bit of show experience. Mike, I wanted to start with you because we probably did 10 years of coming to interview you in your booth. Now we see you walking around the aisles. I rarely, CES is one of the few shows a year that I get to walk the aisles and I really enjoy that. And sometimes if I've got no agenda for a couple of hours and I can walk the floor, it's really fun. But you've kind of made that switch. Tell me a little about, about the motivation and, and, and what it's like for you. Sure. Well, I've done shows, I've participated in shows as an exhibitor for about 31 years. So it feels a little bit like I've escaped from the circus. <laughs> There's a little bit of freedom to yeah. walk the aisles and not be tethered to a 600 square foot piece of carpet, expensive carpet. Um, <laughs> that being said, our experience is a little bit unique. I'm not professing everyone should not come back to a show next year. I think shows are are an absolute necessity for overwhelming for an overwhelming number of, of uh, exhibitors and and of course the educational uh, aspect of a show um, uh, the workshops and the symposiums and uh, are invaluable in our case um, we found that every year we tried to collect more leads because everyone puts leads as the benchmark yeah, of a successful show the measure. so you all kind of lie to each other about how many leads you got right but uh, it, as shows have consolidated over the years, and the, we wanted to change that metric. It wasn't about lead generation. It was about quality over quantity. And that sounds, that sounds like, a, like a gimmicky Another statement. Another buzzword, yeah. It really is yeah. quantity over quality. And in our world, we're, we're a little bit unique in that we're selling products that, although once common in the 80s and 70s and 60s and maybe even 90s, it kind of went out of favor and then for a lot of technical reasons has rushed back into favor again. Mm. And so there's this sea of, uh, there's an empty sea of knowledge out there. As we talked about earlier, the yeah. gray tsunami. It's affected our business more than maybe others. So we found that education works best rather than sales, rather yeah. than marketing. You know, buy from us, we're bigger, we're faster, we're cheaper, we're this, we're that. That doesn't work. People mm. are saying, why do we need to even have this product? So we found that, that workshops, webinars, symposiums, publishing papers, podcasts, where we can spend time not talking about sales efforts, the size of pumps and the sexiness yeah. of a machine, but really the reason people might need our products. We yeah. don't make machines that build things. We don't build, our machines don't build anything. Our yeah. machines take a product that's already been built and make it more reliable. Yeah. And whether someone needs that is, um, is a question. And yeah. that question can't be answered in the 30 second exchange we get on a show floor. No. So yeah. we did, we're not advocating everyone leave shows. For us, it made sense to just take a break. And we've done our break for a few years and we've, we've filled in the gaps with uh, workshops and podcasts yeah. and all this stuff that we've talked about that over the yeah. years. And, and that enables us to, to really sit down you know, at a workshop for eight hours with a customer, enjoy breakfast with them, have yeah. lunch with them. And by the yeah. time you get to the afternoon, we're really talking about solutions to problems, if yeah. there are problems. Yeah, yeah. so you get into something real. And that's part of the, the whole change we're seeing in the marketing mix. I know you've like, you built a studio at your place, and I see posters of you where it looks like you're doing stand-up. So it's, uh, it's, it's started to move. Beyond when I look at your experience, it shows one of the things I like about your company is you've never gone for the big flashy booths with the with the waterfalls and the uh, and all the bright lights. But it's kind of a it's just a straightforward information booth. It's an opportunity to come and talk to you, and, and then I guess take the conversation elsewhere. Yeah, and for us, we have two audiences at shows like this. One is our end customers, and the other one uh, are partners. You know, we partner with virtually all the oven manufacturers. Uh, and more and more now with this new smart factory trend, it's about collaboration and instead of optimizing an island, in our case a reflow oven or a, or a wave solder machine, you, you take the holistic approach. So you send the data to EMS or uh, an AOI machine and uh, help them uh, make either automatic decisions or um, provide a traceability, whatever you have. So we have dozens of partners at this show, and so we're here just as much for them as we are for our customers. Yeah, yeah. and Scott, I guess that's the same with you. You're gonna meet some customers here, but you're spending plenty of time with your principals as well. Absolutely, I mean, in, in some ways, uh, 
my focus has changed, but in some ways it's not. I mean, one of the things that uh, Southwest uh, Systems does is we want to represent the products we would buy if we were in the industry. And if you look at our line card, it, it, it looked a lot like my old shop floor. Um, so, you know, it, I love coming to shows. I think it's... Uh, I, I, I think it's the networking that you get uh, and plus learning, you know, uh, to come and just sit and talk to somebody and say, what are you doing? And, and, and the why's and how um, to me, I, I, this is one of my favorite weeks yeah. of the year, honestly, because, yeah. and, and I, I wear out the carpet. I, I, when I was a EMS owner, I, I stayed from, uh, you know, first thing in the morning to the end of the day, every day and, yeah. and would have the show floor pretty much memorized. And, and, and it's because there's a lot of information. There's a lot of good people to get to know and, 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 and keep the relationships going. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's great to have that networking opportunity and, and see so many people. And it's great to have the time to enjoy it and do it properly. Guys, thanks very much for taking part. I hope you enjoy the rest of the trade show. Um, have some fun here and uh, thank you for being on the first That Scoop Show. Thank you.